This time we are going to talk about the conditional execution in practice scripts. The practice control structures are block of code like the if-else statements. They are responsible of analyzing conditions and deciding which code to be executed. Practice also provides special functions returning information about the system and its settings. Some of them will be shown in this tutorial. For this video, we are using Trace32 PowerView for ARM 64 bits with the release of February 2014. I've created for this second demo a new practice script dealing mainly with the control structures. So let's load our script. As usual, all the training scripts can be found under T32 demo training. Then select practice. And here is the new script. First, let's reset all the commands of the debugger to their default state. Then perform a system reset to reset all the system settings. Select the CPU with the command system.cpu. Then enter to the debug mode by doing a system app. Now we load an elf file with the command data load elf. This sign refers to the directory of the current script, which means that our elf file is now in the same folder as the CMM script. Open a list window to display the source code of the application. We use the WinPost command in order to fix the position for the new window. We can switch to the high level mode by the command mod.hll. In the following block we want to verify that the boot code was executed and that main was correctly reached. The wait command is used to block the execution until a specified condition becomes true. We can add optionally a timeout so that we will not wait forever if the condition never comes true. If both a condition and a period are specified, the first to enter the desired state terminates the command. Then we use the if-else block to test the results. The command go.directMain assumes that there is a symbol called main. Once the symbol exists, we can use its name instead of the address. The practice function state.run returns true if the system is in a running state, otherwise it returns false. The command wait will wait for the target to be stopped for a maximum of 5 seconds in this case. Now we verify if the location of our actual program counter is in the same address as the symbol main. This can be done by comparing the register PC, which is practice function returning the content of a register value, with the address that offset of main, which returns the numerical address of main. It simply removes the address class. In case the condition is true, we print that we already booted to function main. Otherwise, a red line will be written saying that the booting to function main did not succeed. The var.draw displays the content of sine wave graphically. Here we are setting a right breakpoint on sine wave, so that each time a value is written, the system repeats the operation until a predefined condition is met. In our case, the condition is to get a negative value of sine wave. Let's now set a right breakpoint on sine wave. We will repeat the operation while the values are still positive. The values will be displayed graphically in this window. 
As much as you click on step, you can see in the graphic how the values are shown in the word draw window. Instead of clicking too much on the step button, you can create breakpoint somewhere inside the loop and hit continue. You can look to the full diagram if you click on the full button. I am expecting a negative value, so when we reach 1, the loop ends. Now we can print it using word.value value of sine wave. Now we finished the script. The use of an undo at the end is recommended. If you think that there is something unclear in the explanation, you can press help, index, click on functions only if you are looking for a function, and type it in this field. The documentation about this function will be shown in an external PDF. Thank you for watching. I hope you did enjoy this tutorial and see you next time.